So let's recap our learning for the protective bonding conductor. Bit of a hot potato for me because obviously this video is being produced during the 17th edition of the wiring regulations and we know they're going to make some alterations as we move towards the 18th. So I'll start off with what's required currently for us under the 17th edition and then we'll look at the adaption that is required as we move towards the 18th. Currently the protective bonding conductor often 10 millimeter squared in a domestic dwelling needs to be connected to the extraneous conductive parts. We class extraneous conductive parts as metallic water pipe, metallic gas pipe, metallic oil pipe, the metallic structure of a building are all extraneous conductive parts and will need connecting to the protective bonding conductor. As we move towards the 18th edition, we need to look at the incoming supply pipe work. So in other words, at the moment, this water pipe coming in is metallic, making the water system an extraneous conductive part. Often now in dwellings, especially domestic dwellings, the incoming water pipe is made of plastic and under the 18th edition, that will no longer be classed as an extraneous conductive part. Likewise, I've been informed that gas pipes can also now come in in plastic and if a plastic water pipe and a plastic gas pipe come into an installation under the 18th edition, we're currently working at the 17th, depending on when you're watching this video, they will also not be classed as an extraneous conductive part. Our exam requires us to be able to identify extraneous conductive parts. Extraneous conductive parts for us are metallic water pipe, metallic gas pipe, metallic oil pipe, metallic structure of the building, and all of those will need connecting to the protective bonding conductor in order it brings them all to a common potential. And we normally shout this out at me in order to reduce the risk of three things, shock, fire, and explosions. We will need to secure a clamp onto the pipe work in order to make the connection from our protective bonding conductor. So we're gonna be using a bonding clamp, older style one. We have used some more modern versions of these also in my electrical workshop. The important thing for our exam is what the tag says on it. The tag says safety electrical connection do not remove and that's often an exam question. Also, we've got to work out where we're going to insert the clamp in our pipe work. This is our water stop tap. This is our gas meter. This is consumer side pipe work. This is consumer side pipe work. We must be within 600 mil of the incoming water and the incoming gas, oil, etc. Therefore, somewhere within this piece of pipe work here, within 600 mil, I must insert my clamp. However, we've also introduced a branch. According to BS7671, we must be within 600 mil of the stop tap, gas meter, oil inlet point, or before the first branch. This distance here is considerably under 600 mil. However, my clamp will be required to be inserted in that part of the pipe in order to conform with BS7671. Our exam will expect us to be able to identify exposed and extraneous conductive parts. In this part of the presentation, we looked at extraneous conductive parts, non-electrical, metal, therefore need connecting to the protective bonding conductor. So extraneous conductive parts being metal water pipe, metal gas pipe, metal oil pipe. As we move towards the 18th edition, we may have to adjust our thinking and look at the incoming pipe work from the supply authorities in order to work out whether the outgoing pipe work is still going to be classed as an extraneous conductive part. However, at the moment we're looking at metal water pipe, metal gas pipe, metal structure of the building, are all extraneous conductive parts and therefore need connecting to the protective bonding conductor in a domestic dwelling that's likely to be 10 millimeters squared, secured by a clamp saying safety electrical connection do not remove onto a piece of pipe work that's bright. Um, in other words, we've removed the paint or anything on it in order to get the best possible electrical connection. Let's move to something different. So we've looked at extraneous conductive parts, now let's look at exposed conductive parts. Our exam will expect us to be able to distinguish between an exposed and extraneous conductive part. Exposed conductive parts are electrical and metal and require connecting to earth. The metallic light fitting here, electrical and metal, class an exposed conductive part. Above us, steel conduit, steel conduit, electrical, metal, therefore an exposed conductive part. Metal trunking, electrical, metal, therefore an exposed conductive part. Let's see if we can find some more exposed conductive parts. So let's look at this rig and finish off our exposed conductive parts. Metal clad consumers unit, electrical and metal, exposed conductive part. The back box of this bulk headed light fitting, electrical and metal, exposed conductive part. Metal clad socket outlets, exposed conductive part. The starter, metal, electrical, exposed conductive part. The key switches here, electrical and metal, therefore an exposed conductive part. 
So this rig has a lot of exposed conductive parts and in our exam we're meant to be able to differentiate between an exposed and extraneous conductive part. I hope this video has been some help.